شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب شح لي صدري ويسير لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe, and peace and blessing of Allah be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who follow his path. Amin summa amin. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincere iman, sound health, and everlasting halal wealth. And I welcome all of you to this show, which is a QA. and a Alhamdulillah, we will try our level best from today that uh, till the end of Ramadan, Till the last uh, iftari, inshallah, we will uh, continuously ca- be coming for the live show because some brothers and sisters were showing their concern, mashallah, they wanted me to uh, confirm that when I'm coming next live on YouTube. So alhamdulillah, my team has decided that inshallah, till the end of Ramadan from today, we will be there every day between 7 and 8, uh, inshallah, for the live Q&A. You can, inshallah, use your all the means of media by texting, you know, through your media sources to the people that you know, inshallah. And if you call them, invite them, inshallah, and when they will put any questions, it will be a benefit to the whole mass, inshallah. And everybody who is contributing and sharing this, inshallah, will be rewarded with this. Barakallah fikum. As you know, this is our live Q&A and... I welcome all the Muslims and non-Muslims and they can put their questions in English, Urdu and Arabic and inshallah I'll try my level best to give them the answer uh, from the Quran and Sunnah inshallah. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sheikh, if one has OCD by thinking he has done kufr many times in a day, is the best way uh, to treat it by ignoring it, otherwise it will get worse. Yes, the best way is to ignore it because a person who is mentally not sound and his mind is, you know, always having a split personality and the disordering of their memory and understanding, then it is better that uh, that person should not be, you know, entertained or should not be reminded of what he is doing. Uh, It should be all positively be spoken. I've already spoken about this and I've already given the answer on this OCD. And uh, there was a person who was asking me about, you know, uh, how to, you know, cure, what is the cure for the OCD. So I have already answered that, inshallah, and I'm going to send you the link soon. uh, You will see it. You can click on that and you will get the answer, a detailed answer of that. Okay. Uh, Ali, Ali, uh, you gave talk about Abdul Qadir Jilani. Please give us a short talk on... Imam Ghazali will be great to clear any misunderstanding. I will do, inshallah, I will do. And normally, as I told you, even yesterday I was telling you that I don't have any intention to, you know, speak anything bad. But as far as history is concerned, a brief biography I will bring about Imam Ghazali, rahmatullah alayhi, inshallah. Okay. Uh, what is the benefit of giving charity in the last 10 days of Ramadan? See, the benefit of charity, I have already texted the, uh, you know, the link. You can click on that and you can get the answer for OCD, the brother who was asking about it, inshallah. Okay, so what is the benefit of giving charity in the last 10 days of Ramadan? Uh, First of all, it is, uh, you know, charity in general is one of the uh, etiquettes of, uh, best etiquettes of a Muslim that shows that a Muslim is... A uh, Muslim by submission, not by name, has got concerned about the humanity. And he is amongst those who is uh, rewarded, who is guaranteed in the Jannah, uh, guaranteed for the Jannah, because in Surah Al-Ma'arij and Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has said that uh, uh, people who are giving charity, they are guaranteed of being successful in the hereafter. But as your question related to the 10 days, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is mentioned that in the hadith by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and other sahaba, 
that he used to be generally he used to be generous in all the months but he used to be more generous and faster than the storming wind uh, in the month of Ramadan with regards to the charity so that means this is the sunnah that you are following and you will be rewarded alhamdulillah uh, there is no limit there is no limit of you know being generous any time but when you are generous in the month the last 10 days of ramadan then is a, in urdu we say sone pe suhaga it's like you know a uh, reward over reward alhamdulillah indefinite reward you will get for that okay sheikh a quick question is it bad to read too much quran like too much food is bad for body and same with uh, recitation too much of it is it bad for soul no there is nothing bad for soul while reading the quran inshallah Uh, I asked the mufti regarding this. He said that reading too much Quran will make you see light, uh, light during day. I'm confused. I uh, see. First of all, my brother, your question uh, was uh, you de- were already discussing with the mufti. So whenever the things are not clear when you are discussing when, with any alim or sheikh or mufti, then you should keep on asking the question till your doubts are cleared. so uh, i don't know what uh, what what is he actually referring to but quran is nur quran is nur hadith in sahih muslim that means quran is not nur in the sense that the, you don't have electricity in your house at night then you open the quran and you'll get the n- light no it is uh, metaphorically it is known as uh, nur and light which means that people who are in doubt people who are confused people who are in uh, you know uh, darkness as spiritual darkness religious darkness and like social feelings are you know confused and uh, they don't know where they're heading to and the life is all uh, upset and sad then definitely quran is cure quran is mercy quran is nur quran is cure for all the spiritual and physical diseases inshallah quran is uh guidance from all the things which are people they don't know where they're heading to for misguidance is like a google map for the truth in this life that will lead you from here to the jannah so that's a uh, guidance and quran is nur which means it takes you out of the darkness to the light that means it opens you uh, your you know the mind and it brings you to the light which means everything will be clear why you are created who is your creator and how to you know uh, approach the creator and what what is the purpose of your creation and if you are created for some some purpose then how to fulfill that what should be the main sources what is the purpose of this life what is the purpose of the hereafter if is there any life in the hereafter is there any uh, you know uh, good after a uh, hardship or something like that so everything that a person has uh, is in darkness or unclear quran is the book of guidance quran is the book of uh, you know clarification quran is the book of mercy Quran is the book of remedy and cure Quran is the book of light inshallah so in that sense so your question is reading too much of the Quran no i'm not saying reading too much of the Quran is bad for your health but what are you reading and how are you reading and what's your purpose behind it like Quran is saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said yasalunaka anil uh, anfal qulil anfalu lillahi wa rasul فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا رَسُولًا كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Surah Al-Anfar chapter 8 and verse 2 Allah SWT is saying that the true believers are those when the Allah is mentioned the hearts start sparkling MashaAllah the, the hearts get triggering and our hearts start reacting to it responding to it and when the quran is being recited see it's being recited uh, iman is increased iman is increased so when you read the quran definitely your iman will increase but i have already answered one of the questions that what are the duties that we owe to quran we owe six duties to the quran we owe six rights to the quran if you read the quran by fulfilling this 
six duties, then inshallah you can read as much as you can. First is to read the Quran in Arabic, correct reading. Second thing is that you uh, learn the Quran with understanding. You read the Quran with understanding. Third is that you accept everything that you are reading. Fourth, that you try your level best to follow what are the do's and don'ts that you come in to, across the reading. And the fifth is that now you have to preach that message to the people that this is how you read, this is how you understand, this is how you accept it, this is how you apply it. This is the message you have to convey to the other people, Muslims and non-Muslims. And then you do these five duties throughout your life till your breath, last breath. So these are the things. When you read with these conditions, inshallah, you can read as much as you want, inshallah. People, subhanallah, during the time of Rasul their life was Quran. Their, you know, eating was Quran. Their drinking was Quran. Their, the whole thing up and down, in and out. The whole, you know, uh, life from bed to cradle, uh, bed to bed, from getting up from the bed, going back to the bed, from that, this 24 hours was all Quran. They never went against the Quran. So it's all reading Quran is like fulfilling those six rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Hmm. Okay, Ramadan is the month of Quran. I sometimes uh, find it is very difficult to read. I sometimes find it is difficult to read. Uh, and that's bad for our soul. Okay, the Qasim, I have already answered your question. Uh, I, I don't get your point. Ramadan is a month of Quran. I sometimes find it's very difficult to read. I don't know what's the problem, but uh, it should not be a problem for any Muslim by submission. He shouldn't have any problem with reading of the Quran, subhanAllah. As I said, if you fulfill those six rites of the Quran, I've already spoken in one of the clips, alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, uh, to complete one Quran for me is difficult. Sometimes I don't know. It is difficult for me to uh, complete. Something inside me is a lot of resistance. See, com completing the whole Quran is not compulsory in the month of Ramadan. As I said that I didn't say in my six conditions and six rights that we owe to the Quran, I didn't say that you have to complete the Quran. I said you have to read the Quran, mashallah, you have to understand the Quran, you have to accept it in the heart, you have to apply it in your life, and then you have to convey it to the people and you have to do these duties all. I've already answered that question in one of my clips. So you can, inshallah, uh, click on that and you will get the answer to it, inshallah. So I think it won't be a difficulty and always read and say because Allah SWT, how can it be difficult for the Muslims because Allah SWT, he will never lie. Allah has said in Surah Al-Qamar وَلَقَدْ يَسَّنَ الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ That indeed we have made the Quran easy. Is there anybody who wants to learn it, who wants to read it, who wants to understand it, who wants to apply it, who wants to convey it, who wants to teach it? So who wants to live by it and who wants to die by it? SubhanAllah. يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَعْدِ بِهِ كَثِيرًا Through the Qur'an people will be misguided and through the Qur'an people will be guided. Those people who are trying to read the Qur'an and to find the errors in it, they will be definitely will be misguided. And those people who, wants to, uh, who want to read the Qur'an to come to the truth, inshallah they will be guided. So uh, I don't think so that Qur'an is difficult, SubhanAllah. It is, you know, like a... Uh, it's a, uh, energy to your soul. It is an energy to your ruh, mashallah. Okay. Uh, who, whose status is the best and closest to Allah? The muttaqin. Muttaqin is the best status. Uh, that in Allah ma'al muttaqin. In Allah ma'al muttaqin. So this is the best. And see the first ayah after Surah Al-Baqarah, when the Surah Al-Baqarah starts, Allah SWT has used the word muttaqin. No other word has been used before that. 
Allah is saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alif la mim, dhalika al-kitabu la rayba fihi, hudan lil muttaqeen. So see, this is, <coughs> the Quran is from Allah, and Allah has revealed this Quran, and Allah is saying this is the guidance to the muttaqeen. So that means muttaqeen will be the first people, and see, uh, Quran, subhanAllah says that, uh, in Surah Maryam, Allah is saying that, تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي نُورِثُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَةً نُورِثُهَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَةً That this is تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي نُورِثُهَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَةً In Surah Maryam Allah is saying that this is the Jannah, Paradise, Allah's main destination for the believers. Allah is saying that this destination, this Jannah will be the inheritance of the the heirs of the Jannah will be those people who are muttaqin. So Allah starts the Quran with muttaqin. Allah ends in the in the Jannah with the muttaqin. Subhanallah. So I can say that the muttaqin are those people who are closest to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they are the best. Okay, scholars or people of Quran. Our uh, people of Quran cannot be, you know, the scholars are people of Quran. So there is no differentiate, uh, like those people who just read the Quran, Allah, Allah, Hafiz, Quran, and this and that, they are not scholars. But all the scholars are people of the Quran, and not all the people of the Quran are scholars. What do I mean by that? Because there will be people of the Quran who are, you know, Hafiz, Quran, they read every day, they are Imam of the Masajid, and they might be, you know, uh, reading uh, Allahu Allahu 24-7, but they don't understand. They are not knowledgeable. They don't have the knowledge of the Quran. Knowledge of the Quran is, as I said, reading, writing, understanding, and, uh, you know, accepting and applying in your life. And you should know when to preach it. So all these five things are the uh, qualities of the scholar. So the scholars, all the scholars of Islam, they are people of the Quran because a scholar cannot be a scholar if he doesn't know the Quran. So they are the people of the Quran, but not vice versa. That means all people of the Quran are not the scholars. So I, I refer to the, and Allah SWT has said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء So uh, see, this Allah is saying that, that only those pe people who fear Allah amongst His servants are those who are scholars, are ulama. So that means, how, and how, how do you know that you should be scared? What kind of uh, khashiyatullah? the fear and the respect and appreciation and consciousness of Allah. How will you get that? Unless you have the knowledge. And Allah is saying that the most closest to me, the most people who concentrate about me, ponder about me, learn about me, know about me, they are the people who are the ulama, the scholars. Allah didn't say about the people of the Quran. Ya halul Quran, Allah never said that. But ya, ya yulladhina amanu, uh, and uh, the people, those who have believed in him. So uh, scholars are those people who are people of the Quran, but not all the people of the Quran are scholars. Okay. Uh, Ali Ali, cleanliness. Please, can you talk about hadith, about cleanliness in every way? Not only wudu, in every uh, way, outside house, garden, inside house. I see generally, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, tahara is Niswal Iman. Uh, tahara to Niswal Iman. That the purification is uh, half of your faith. That means, uh, as I said that, you know, uh, Rasul used to even clean his mouth 24-7. Means whenever he used to have any kind of a problem with his, uh, what do you call, uh, smell or anything, even he go, goes to his wife, he would, you know, uh, uh, use miswak. When he used to, you know, sit in the gathering, he would use miswak. When he used to go for the salah, he used to do use miswak. When he used to do wudu, he used to use miswak. So this is the purification of the mouth. Purification is our iman, our core iman, our faith. So if a person is unclean or doesn't like to keep himself clean, then uh, definitely so he is not a true believer. He may be anything but not be a true believer. So purification, it has to be not only that, purification first it comes from inside your heart. Your spiritually should be pure, then your physically should be pure, and your clothes should be clean, your surrounding should be clean, your, you know, house and your rooms and house and 
and the places where you come and go and stay, that should be clean. Your, uh, you know, the outside the house, your neighbor, you know, the surroundings around you, anybody, like I said, yes, the day before yesterday, I was talking about the Iman. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, al nadhafatu min al-Iman, but Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that al-Imanu sab'un, sab'una wa bid'una shu'ba. That Prophet has said, Iman Sab'un wa Bid'una Shu'ba. That Iman is uh, 70 plus branches. A'alaha kalimatu la ilaha illallah wa adnaha amatatil adha ani tariq. Amatatil adha ani tariq. That the, uh, the highest branch of Iman is saying la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And the lowest is that cleaning the harmful things from the places where people walk on it. So this is, it refers to what? Anything that could be, you know, it is not part of our Iman spitting here and throwing rubbish here and there and messing up our house, our room, our neighbor, our society. No, that's not the quality of a Muslim by submission. Muslim by submission is what he loves for himself, he loves for others the same, which means a true Muslim by submission he will be always like to be neat and clean, so he prefers everything should be neat and clean. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, Shamim Suleiman. Uncle, it's Zara and I need to ask a question. When Gog and Magog get unlocked, will the Jal be unlocked too? The Jal will come before Gog and Magog. The Jal will come before Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog will come after the Jal has died, after the Jal has gone from this dunya, after Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus, he will fight him and when he will kill him, then after that when Isa alayhi salam, will be living his life, normal life, he will get married, he will have family and when then after some times he will live there and this Gog and Magog will be released at that time after the Jal has died. So Dajjal and Gog and Magog will not come together. First Dajjal will come and then Isa Salam will come and Isa Salam will fight with Dajjal and Dajjal will be killed by Isa Salam and then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will uh, you know le let Isa Salam get settled down and after that Isa Salam uh, will Isa Salam uh, will be told that take your believers with you on the mountain and the Gog and Magog will pass by and they will try to destroy everybody and then hello okay somebody called me and then it hanged up okay so uh, Isa will uh, will be uh, informed by Allah that you will not fight with this person you have to just leave him and go up so then Isa alayhi salam, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So Isa alayhi salam will stay there uh, on the mountain and this Gog and Magog will come on the, on the, the land and then Allah SWT will send a breeze or a wind which will kill all of them and the birds will come and you know eat them and then Allah SWT will send a huge rain which will wipe them off, everything will be cleaned and then Isa Sassam will come down again and then he will live a peaceful life. So then after that he will die and he will be buried next to the grave of Rasul So Alhamdulillah this is uh, the answer to your question. Gog and Magog will come after the death of the uh, Dajjal. How can I have the Iman of Abu Bakr? No my brother, nobody can have uh, Iman of Abu Bakr. If nobody can have, you know, Iman of Allah, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Nobody can have Iman of uh, Abu Bakr. Nobody, Abu Bakr cannot have a Iman of Rasul Sallallahu And Abu Umar cannot have the Iman of Abu Bakr. All of, all of them have got their different, uh, what do you call, all of them have got their different uh, level of Iman. So all we have to do is that we have to try our best that we live by Islam and we die by Islam. In verse 162 and 63, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about uh, the true believers with the true Iman. 
and that is uh, when Prophet ﷺ was asked by the Quraysh, uh, who is the true, uh, what is the definition of a true Muslim, then Rasul ﷺ could not give the answer, so Allah revealed this ayat, and Allah read, uh, Rasul ﷺ read this ayat, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَا وَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That O Muhammad uh, tell them that uh, my prayers, my salah, my uh, sacrifices, my life and my death all are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has no partner and he is one and only and this is what Allah has commanded me and I'm the first Muslim. So you, all we have to do is that we have to keep up with our Iman and we have to do, use all the means by which, you know, it keeps our Iman higher. Because it was only one person like Abu Bakr, he said that when Rasulullah said that there will be eight doors of the Jannah will be open on the Day of Judgment and only few people will be allowed to go from all the eight of the eight gates of the Jannah. The gate of the Jannah will be like one of the day, gates will be a rayyan, which is only fasting people. So Abu Bakr asked, Ya Rasulullah, is there any person who will go from all the eight gates, will be allowed to go from any of the eight gates? Rasulullah said, yes, it will be you. So that means nobody can get that privilege of Abu Bakr. So uh, this is what I said. Yeah, your next question. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, are you Hafiz of Quran? Yes, I am Hafiz of Quran, alhamdulillah. And uh, Assalamu Alaikum, Sheikh. I asked you a question about ghusl and you said no washing lips doesn't uh, well invalidate ghusl, but it's the lips not counted as part of face. And for ghusl, you must wash your face. But Alhamdulillah, you already told me in your question that you already first washed your lips. So Alhamdulillah, that's the reason I gave you. I did wash my lips at the beginning of ghusl. So this is, that's the reason I said you don't have to wipe it, wash it again. I know, I understood your question. I understand English. So when you told me, so I did answer your question that I did wash my lips at the beginning of ghusl, but as I mentioned right at the end, I gargled my mouth, but I didn't wash my mouth again. So, is I, yes, understood. Once you have already washed your lips at the beginning, Alhamdulillah, it is part of your ghusl, it is part of your wudu. So why do you have to, you know, be worried about your uh, washing of your lips? Alhamdulillah. Okay. Cleanliness, uh, many of the restaurants, shops, washrooms in Bari Park are not clean. Uh, I don't think so that these are, mashallah, good Muslims. May Allah reward them, may Allah guide them. If they are really good Muslims, then they would have been a good example for the society. We should be the cleanest, but unfortunately, we are not clean. Uh, not uh, Non-Muslims are more clean than us. No, I don't agree with you. Don't say that, my brother. People who are using tissues, how can you say that they are cleaner, more clean than those people who are using water? Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised those believers in the Quran uh, that uh, إِنَّ اللَّهَ in Allah, you have mutatahirin. Mutatahirin are those who are using water. And this is it, it's, refer, it's referring to that group, the batch of uh, Arabs at that time who were not using water. But when they became Muslim, Allah SWT has praised them in the Quran. So you can't compare Muslims, uh, even uh, ordinary Muslim, you can't compare that with the you know non-Muslims saying that uh, they are more clean than us. No, subhanallah. Never say that. Muslim may not be, you know, practicing Muslim, but as far as cleanliness is concerned, inshallah, he will still keep himself, you know, much clearer than uh, you know, those people. Now, they, how can you say a person who cleans himself even once in a day, if he cleans himself with the water, he is less cleaner than the one who only use throughout the day or maybe for months he might be only using tissues. So it's, it's wrong uh, analysis of yours. But definitely I know that we, as far as, as, far as hygienic uh, issues are concerned, we Muslims are very careless in that. I know that. So in that case, I agree with you. Like their restaurants, yes, I know. This, I have seen in their kitchens, they have got worms coming out. 
insects are coming out. Sometimes they you know, the parcels, the packages that they send, it has got in insects in that. So, and it has been highlighted by the Luton authorities, councils, uh, the food authorities have uh, highlighted that. Some of the shops have been given warning. Uh, the restaurants been given war warning. Yeah, washrooms are again, uh, subhanAllah. Because see, the thing is, the problem with Muslims is that they want their house to be clean. But they don't care that w whatever the mess up that they do with others. That's not part of Islam. That's what I'm saying. A Muslim by name can do this, but Muslim by submission, who has submit, submitted his will to Allah SWT, he will not do that because the definition never goes with that Muslim if he is of that kind. Definition says, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimina min lisanihi Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi A true Muslim is the one who is, you know, protecting other Muslims from the harm that could cause by the tongue or his hands. So, and then a Muslim is لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيهما يحب لنفسه A Muslim cannot be a true Muslim unless he loves for others what he loves for himself. So if he is neat and clean and tidy, Alhamdulillah, he'll keep everything neat, clean and tidy. But if he within himself is dirty, then Alhamdulillah. But still I will not compare them with the non-Muslims. So my brother, I agree with you in something, but I won't agree with you in everything. Okay, Zara, you have asked about the Jal. I've sent you a link, which is end times. You can click on that link and you will get the complete details of uh, the Jal, Gog and Magog, Isa Alayhi Salam and everything. Inshallah. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, Tofu Tofu, you have asked me that uh, when will be my next program. So, this for your information, inshallah, I will try my level best that till the end of Ramadan from today, I will try to, you know, come live between 7 and 8 every day, inshallah till the end of Ramadan and inshallah then after that we can enjoy our Eid. So for your information inshallah from today uh, I will be always there between 7 and 8 till the end of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. If some surahs uh, when we come up to a sajda ayat there is a line under the ayat but there, uh, then there is one or two more ayats then a sign says sajda. Uh, do we uh, do the sajda then or where it is, where the line is? See, when the uh, ayah which shows you that this is the word of sajda is there, then at the end of that ayah you have to do the sajda. At the end of that ayah, after you have read that. So not, not at the word or not at the line, but uh, you know you have to continue till the end of the ayah and once the ayah is completed, then you do the sajda inshallah. Luton guy, if the father does not give permission to marry, can the girl ask her brother for permission? And if the brother says uh, on then uh, no, then can she ask her uncle and he is the uncle uh, says no. And if the uncle says no, then can she ask uh, her granddad? Oh, subhanallah. Why these four people will say no to the marriage? There should be some reason. It's a common sense. Father is saying no, brother is saying no, uncle is saying no, grandfather is saying no. Why? Why? There is a reason. There has to be a reason. Okay. Generally speaking, uh, if the father is alive and he has got cultural reason and he is not allowing, you know, the daughter to be married because they have got our khandan and our status, family status, is not from our kabila, is not from our tribe, is not from our, our zat or, you know, caste then that reason is invalid. This is one thing. If the father is refusing because of the religious reason, yes, then he has the right. He can say no that. And if she goes to the uncle, and if he has also the same reason, says no, then he is also right. And if she goes to the brother and he says no because of the religious reason, then he is right. And grandfather says no for the religious reason, then he is right. And if these four of them, they say no for no religious reason, then she has to, 
you know, go to the imam and explain the whole story to the imam with the witnesses, like, you know, elderly people and the other family members to confirm that, yes, this is the case. And then imam, inshallah, will try his level best to either speak to the father, brother or uncle or grandfather to tell them that this, if there is no Islamic reason, then they should not, you know, say no to this marriage. So this is how it goes. Otherwise, uh, it clicks on my mind that how the four people, what could be the reason for one can say no, the second can say no, third can say no, all four of them saying no. It's not, it's, it, there has to be some reason to that. Okay, alhamdulillah. Two or four. Do sisters have to cover their hair when doing the sajda of the ayah in the Quran? No. Covering of the hair for the woman is only required when she is performing hajj or umrah or when she is praying his, her namaz. Otherwise, reading of the Quran, the whole Quran, every time she reads the Quran, she doesn't have to cover her head or hair. Okay, Mary Z, in my mouth, there's always some white, uh, slippery thing near my teeth. I am, uh, am I, uh, I am I required to, okay, am I required to keep on spitting it out? Or can I just ignore it and let it stay in my mouth since it's out of my control? No, even if it goes into your stomach, doesn't matter. It won't break your uh, fasting because something which is already like uh, every person has got saliva and more mouth will always re remain wet with the you know saliva and other things. So that if, even if it goes inside, like for somebody, if like I'm doing like this. It won't break my, you know, fast and it won't have anything. So if that thing that is what you are referring to, white thing, if it comes in within your mouth and it is from inside the mouth, then inshallah, it won't break your fast and you can just leave it as it is, ignore it inshallah. Jazakallah khair and sheikh. I just don't want to miss this program. I missed half of it today, but alhamdulillah, I caught the rest. But you can watch the clip, inshallah, next time uh, after the recording is done, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Please invite other people as well so you'll get more reward for that. Okay, Sumaya Kim. I would like to ask a question. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam. Could you please explain exactly in detail what is wrong with the uh, Ash'ari Aqeedah? Jazakallah khairan. Ash'ari Aqeedah, they have a problem with, you know, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have the problems with some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, uh, it is from uh, their founder, which is, has got the name Ash'ari. So from that Aqeedah, he had his uh, philosophy of understanding with the rights and also uh, the things which speaks about uh, the sins. Uh, some of the sins can take you out of the fold of Islam and some of the sins are... Uh, it won't like that they have that confusion in that and uh, here I cannot give you the whole details of them because it's a question answer thing alhamdulillah but inshallah uh, next time I will uh, record it separately in my recording and I'll make a clip of that and I'll put on my YouTube so next time when you'll come Sumaya inshallah I'll send you the link and you will understand more about uh, Ash'ariya inshallah I'll try my level best to prepare that article today itself inshallah after the Tarawih, uh, when I'll be preparing my, you know, the night Ibadah, during that time, inshallah, I'll prepare it for you. Jazakallah khair for this uh, feedback. Alhamdulillah. Uh, if a mom uh, tells her uh, grown-up children that she has uh, given sadaqah, is this okay? And not considering Riyah and nullifies the sadaqah, can you answer in Arabic? إذا إنسان يظهر أنها إنه أو أنها صدقت أو تصدقت لله سبحانه وتعالى وتذكر لأمام الأولاد والذكور والنساء لتشجيعتهم هذا يجوز هذا لا يدخل في باب الرياء هذا يجوز ولكن إذا إنسان عنده نية أنا أريد أن أظهر أنا تصدقت هذا وكلمت فعلت هذا خير وهذا كي ناس يمدحوني أنا فهذا رئاء وهذا لا تقبل الله سبحانه وتعالى يسعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى أو يو بليفد دو نوت ديستروي يو صدقات أن يو جود ديدز باي منشنينج يو نو أو إكسبرسينج إت تو ذا بيبل 
إذا هذا يعني قصد الإنسان أنا تصدقت وأنا أريد أن أظهر الناس أنا رجل سخي وأنا رجل غني وأنا عندي يعني خير للناس وهذا فهذا الرياء هذا لا يوجر عليه لكن الإنسان عنده النية ويظهر هذه الأشياء ويبغي يتذكر أنه هو فعل كذا وهي فعلت كذا وكذا أمام الناس أمام الصغار أمام الكبار كي تشجيع لهم هذا يجوز إن شاء الله وهذا ما يدخل في باب الرياء إن شاء الله Uh, the sister has asked this question that if a person, uh, the elderly person has like mother, she has given something in charity and she is mentioning that to her uh, grown up children. Is that uh, allowed or not or it becomes like, you know, showing off? I said no, Quran says that do not destroy your charity by mentioning it or by doing, you know, harmful things or mentioning by manna wal adha like mentioning the favors of that or, or you know doing some uh, statements saying some statements with the uh, mouth that could harm the person I said that is not allowed but if a person is whether it is a mother or father or uh, anybody if he or she has given something in charity and want to tell the people for encouragement to tell them, okay, this is good and this is rewarding because I did this and that. So Alhamdulillah, I said that is permissible for encouraging the people. And if a person is showing off and by mentioning all this good that person has done and in front of the people so that they can praise that person, then it is uh, showing off and it is uh, wo it won't be accepted and won't be rewarded. Okay. Uh, Mom only tells us her children, what she has done, but not others. Okay, that's fine. I know that um, uh, parents, they do these kind of things. Uh, like, you know, sometimes I tell my children uh, because they sometimes ask me about my uncles, my aunties in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, in Dubai. So they ask me about my sisters, brothers who are in need or my uncles and aunties. So whenever I help them, I tell my parents, my children that Alhamdulillah today, okay, we have sent some you know, help to our auntie in India. We have sent some help to our, you know, relative in Pakistan. So that's not showing off. That's to, you know, teach them and encourage them that looking after the people in need is, you know, part of our Iman, part of our Islam. Alhamdulillah. So that is allowed, inshallah. Okay, my brothers and sisters, we have got only a few minutes left for the show. And inshallah, I will again come tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So please be ready and even tell your family members to, you know, join us and they can put these questions, mashallah. But inshallah, you can still keep on watching my clips because there are clips coming up in Urdu, there are clips, short clips are coming up in English and some of the articles are also coming up, inshallah. So definitely, uh, uh, mashallah, you, I have seen the uh, viewers have increased, mashallah. Subscribers have risen, increased, mashallah. May Allah reward all of you for all your support to our channel. Alhamdulillah. And Allah will reward all of us, inshallah. Barakallah. This is the best month and best, you know, uh, any activity, any good deed is done in this month is multiplied in reward. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Sheikh uh, Barakallah. Fik. Did you say that you will make a separate video about the Ash'ari Aqeedah? Yes, definitely. I will make a separate video about their Aqeedah. Inshallah. 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 Okay. Uh, can you please just uh, say that in Arabic as well to reassure my mom? Uh, what do you want me to say again? I already said it in English, Arabic. Okay. My, my, okay. Uh, نعم نعم uh, حتى أنا يما لما يجون عيالي في بيتي أولادي يسألون uh, أبوي uh, شو أخبار عمك شو أخبار خالتك شو أخبار أختك شو أخبار فهؤلاء الناس في الهند وباكستان ودبي هم كلهم عندهم يعني هم ناس محتاجين فأنا أحيانا سعدهم يعني بالمبلغ وبال أي, أي أي نوع من المساعدة فأحيانا لما عيالي أو أولادي ما يسألوني أنا أبوي أخبرنا شو هذا شو حال خالتك وعمتك فأنا دائما أقول لهم للتشجيع لنعم سعدنا اليوم عمتك في في الهند وسعدنا خالتك في دبي هكذا يعني فمن باب التشجيع مو من باب الرياء فالحمد لله هذا يجوز إن شاء الله 
بارك الله فيك اوكي سو ذات يو ديد ذات يو دو ات وذ يور تشيلدرن يا الحمد لله هاف انسر ذات اند هاف اكسبلين سو ذس از هاو نورمالي ذا بيرنتس شود بي يو نو ايفن لايك يو نو ذا بيست واي از ذات وين يو تيك يور تشيلدرن اوت سو وين يو وونت تو سي سمبدي هو از ان نيد اند يو وونت تو هيلب يو وونت تو هيلب سمبدي and you when children are with you give the money to them and tell them to give to the poor person that is again uh, it's not like showing off but in the, this is like a encouragement or to teach them like if you want if you see somebody is finding difficulty to cross the road road and you are with the family so one of your family members you can tell them please help this person to you know cross uh, cross the road so that way this is how you encourage them and if somebody is like you know you saw somebody is doing something wrong and you want to correct that person so you can send you know one of your family members uh, advise them good go and speak with this person in a nice way and tell them that the correct way is this and that way that way you are automatically teaching your children teaching your family members and at the same time you are doing a, a rewardable act alhamdulillah so my brothers and sisters as you know this is our live show and alhamdulillah we take your questions in english or then arabic and we try our level best to give you the answer according to quran and sunnah alhamdulillah and uh, please use all your means of media like whatsapp instagram uh, facebook and uh, all the other uh, you know message uh, emails or whatever you have the links and sources media sources by which you can send the text messages to your relatives because mashallah these are very important days we will be meeting inshallah all remaining days of ramadan from tomorrow as uh, between 7 and 8 so you can use that alhamdulillah and explain to them okay uh, Ma- maryam saleh assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam why did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dislike plucking of eyebrows because during the time of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the etiquette of the people uh, women who were immoral women women with the ill character and they would go into public and they would uh, use that a uh, means to flirt to the people and attract uh, draw their attention so that's the reason uh, this uh, was made uh, uh, haram and prohibited otherwise if the woman if uh, any woman if he, her eyebrows are hurting her eyes or blocking her vision then she can use it uh, trim it in a way uh, the intention should be neat and clean it sh- shouldn't be for showing off or making herself more beauty full or you know trying to uh, draw the attentions of the opposite sex or any other person then uh, definitely this person will be cursed but otherwise if a person uh, has got Uh, you know something which look like you know ugly face which resembles like a face of a woman woman's face look like a man or uh, like a, a ugly type of thing then to that extent where your person can you know uh, avoid you know this evil intention which i said that uh, the or to avoid the characteristics of the bad woman in the past in the pre islamic days then inshallah it won't be harmful or it won't be cursed or it won't be sinful inshallah barakallahu fikum Yes my brothers and sisters this is our live show alhamdulillah and if you have got any questions you can put your questions in into and there was this a person called Iqra that person has called me on my mobile the number that is given there as 0787477428 and that person has you know uh, I think I don't know whether the the person has sent the message or not but definitely the person has called and I tried to respond to the person and that person has hanged up so please if you are just making you know fun of it or may just disturbing and interrupting our show then it's not a good thing allah will for you know may allah forgive you and guide you to the right path amin so amin also uh, my brothers and sisters my series are going on about the sirat of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam soon inshallah we will be finishing the seera of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then afterwards inshallah we will be starting with the tafsir of the quran alhamdulillah and with that tafsir of the quran then we will start with the uh, uh, the best thing in islam what are the best things in islam that means we will only talk about the best things in islam 
and also uh, the misconception of the people that the non-Muslims have put in the mind of the Muslims regarding that the Quran is incomplete, Quran is changed, and Quran is, you know, uh, the claim of the Muslims that it is preserved. These are all false, and Quran is a book that should be destroyed. Quran is the book that should be changed. The Quran, all that, inshallah, there will be a specific and a special a subject that will be dealing with, you know, to tell what Quran is. I can't defend the Quran. Quran cannot be defended that way. Quran has already been defended by Allah. Quran is already people who talk about the Quran is someone like, you know, there's no, no match. It's the difference between heavens and the earth. A person talking, standing on the earth and talking about the heavens and trying to touch the heavens, it is that impossible. So Quran, nobody can defend Quran. Quran is defended by itself, within itself. Quran stands by itself as a protected book of Allah and the message of Allah. But inshallah, because if we don't don't reply to these people, then our Muslim brothers and sisters will say, okay, yeah, that uh, enemy of Islam was right because Muslim scholars are not giving the answers. Muslim brothers and da'is and preachers and teachers are not giving reply, not replying to them. It's not necessary to reply every donkey and every monkey walking in the street. No, you can't. You can't reply to any barking dogs. But definitely there is, there are ways to educate Muslims academically. I don't care. I don't care if the Muslims, non-Muslims, they hate Islam. That's their choice. I don't even care if the non-Muslims, Jazakallah Khairan Sheikh, what is the ruling on removing body hair? Oh, you can remove every part of your body. Men are not allowed to uh, remove the hair of the beard, but otherwise, alhamdulillah, chest, under arms, and below the navel, every legs, arms, everything, inshallah. There's no haram, there are restrictions in Islam. Islam. Uh, Rasul Sallam did not say anything about that, so it is permissible. Uh, but regards, with regards to this, you know, uh, the, our Muslim brothers and sisters, they they have these doubts, and they, subhanallah, uh, they want to know the clarity, uh, clarity about uh, is Quran really preserved? Is Quran the book of guidance? Is uh, really a book of Allah? Or there is no changes in this? There is no error in that? And does Quran speak about killing the non-Muslims? Is Quran this and is Quran that? Alhamdulillah. So I, I, I say that my brothers and sisters, you know, there are people, uh, if the non-Muslims, they don't accept Islam, that's fine. We are not worried about that. They have to be worried. Our duty is not to convert everybody to Islam. Our duty is to convey the message of Islam. Rasulullah was told in the Quran, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ O Prophet Muhammad, all those people that you love them, you are not you are not authorized to you know guide them you don't have the power to guide them your message is to convey you are a messenger convey the message and it is allah he wants if he wants to guide anybody it is his choice so he can guide anybody he wants so that's the that's very clear in islam so we as muslims we should not be you know uh, i have four or five uh, pastors they come to my juma khutbah when the before the lock uh, down lock uh, lockdown, and uh, they used to come every time before the adhan of the Jummah. they would stay there. They would listen to my adhan. They would listen to my khutbah. They would attend my Jummah prayer sitting there, and after that we discuss with them. And the, from day one, I told them, look, if you people are have if you have come over here to, with this intention that you will try to change me to Christianity or convert me to Christianity or our, any brother here and there, that's your choice. You can try your best. But mind you well, I said to them, mind you well, I am not at all interested in converting you to Islam. My main concern is my Muslim brothers and sisters who are not upon deen. So my, my efforts are for them to come to the deen. My main concern is, but if you think that you are a scholar and you know everything about your religion, good luck to you. So that's my motive. But at the same time, at the same time, they were, the Quran has got lots of, lots of, lots of words which says, say to them, say to them. 
Yes, Alunaka. They ask you, they ask you, they ask you. The non Muslim used to ask so many questions to Prophet Muhammad. But Allah did not make him silent. Allah did not say, No, Muhammad, you don't give the answer. Allah revealed the Quran and Prophet answered all the questions. So, and then it was the word came, Qul, say, Qul, Qul means say, 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 say. So, based on that, definitely if any non Muslim, if he has got any medical problem, if he has got any mental problem, if he has got any chemical uh, disorderness in his brain, inshallah, I'm here to cure that, inshallah. So anything they have against Islam, Quran or anything, I'm there to inshallah discuss that subject. So we will be dealing that that topics as well, inshallah, in the future. Academically, not if somebody is naked and talk about nakedness, I will not be naked in front of him. If somebody is barking like dog, I won't be barking like dog to him. If somebody is, you know, shouting like donkey, I won't be doing that. Alhamdulillah, but definitely I will speak about the matter. So it could be beneficial for the Muslims and could be remedy and cure for these mad and crazy people. Inshallah, it will be a medicine to them. Inshallah. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, can you tell us how Muslims should joke within boundaries of Islam? It is not allowed to make jokes. It is not allowed to make jokes in Islam in the first place and without upsetting anyone and being uh, happy as well. See, it is encouraging with the deen is allowed. Like a woman came to Rasulullah and she asked, Ya Rasulullah, uh, will I be going to the Jannah? He said to her, no, you are not going to, you will not go to Jannah. And she was upset. And then Prophet called her again and he smiled at her and I said that I actually meant to say you will not go into the Jannah in your old age. You will be a young woman and then you will go to the Jannah. So that was like a joke. But at the same time that is the reality and the truth. But somebody like I know there was a man, he newly got married and it was his wedding night, the first night. And his friends, you know, they made a plan that today we will give him a hard time. And then one of them, he said to this, uh, you know, groom, that, you know, I'll tell you a very serious thing about your wife. And he got surprised. He said, why are you saying in public like this about my wife? What do you know? Say it. And the man said to his wife, uh, this man, that your wife, in Urdu he said, Teri bibi peet le kar aye. Which means, the phrase wise, it means your, womb, your mother, your wife is pregnant. In other words, but literal meaning, word by word, it means your wife is having a stomach with her. She'll bring her stomach or belly with her. And this guy, because it is in Urdu statement, it means that she will be a pregnant. And he's shocked. He said, my wife, yet she is not yet married and I have not even gone to her. And she is my wife. And this night you are telling me that she will be, a, you know, a woman already, a pregnant woman. Then he said, I'm going to... And then they started laughing and making joke of him and said, Come on, yaar. This is in Urdu we say. Kon insan aisa nahi hai, jiske saad peit nahi hota. Tell me, man, which, which person you know that a person does not have the belly? Every person. So your, mother, your wife will be having the belly. So that's joke, but that's a very serious joke. This guy would go and smash his wife and he would say divorce. He would go to the in-laws to say, what kind of a woman that you have given to me? I, I was told that my wife is pregnant before she got married to me. How is that? So that could, you know, so that way in Islam, jokes, you know, can be within the limit of Islam that could, you know, speak about the reality and the truth. Not something fake and not something that could, you know, uh, bring... Uh, problem in the with the people. Totally honest, uh, iftari time we eat too much food, including me. Uh, what is the solution? Uh, Non-Muslim people say, what type of fast you are keeping? Okay, then prove it in the different way. Non-Muslims will always say what they see, because we Muslims are we call ourselves Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims, what does that actually mean? Okay, we became Muslim after listening to the Sunnah people. No, we Muslims should be Muslim by seeing Quran and Sunnah and we should be Muslims by, you know, making people see us what Quran in Surah uh, Fath, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah uh, Tawbah, Surah Araf. These are the four main surahs where Allah SWT did speak about Prophet and Sahaba. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Araf, Surah Tawbah, 
and Surah Muhammad, uh, Surah Fath. In these surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described Rasul sallallahu and Allah described Sahaba, their characters. And the Christians and the Jews who were waiting for Prophet sallallahu to come or the Prophet to arrive, they didn't believe in Prophet sallallahu when they saw him in the Medina, when they saw him in Mecca. They came personally, they stayed in Mecca and Medina and they were observing Muhammad sallallahu and they were observing the Sahaba. They were looking at them. They didn't know Quran, they didn't know Arabic, nothing. But they, will, they knew about the Torah, they knew about the Injil, and they were looking into their books. And it is John 14 in the New Testament, John 15, John 16, John for chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16. It's all there about Jesus talking about Prophet Muhammad. And in Psalm, in the Old Testament, it speaks about the description of Muhammad Sallallahu and the Sahaba. And also Deuteronomy 18.18 18 speaks about Rasul Sallallahu These are the surahs in the New Old Testament, the, the book that they were claiming to be God's book, Bible. They have these descriptions and people, they see, you know, Muslims by that. And also people, they see Muslims in the Quran. Quran says Muslims should do this. Muslims should not do this. Muslims should do this. Muslims should not do this. And when they see that Muslims are doing things which are not allowed in the Quran to do, and the Muslims are not doing things which Quran tells them to do. So when they see that, definitely they will come up with this idea. They'll say, come on, first you follow your book. If you don't follow your book, how come you are telling us to follow your book? So this is the truth. As far as this eating of too much food is concerned, that's, alhamdulillah, uh, if the non-Muslim does not understand, tell him, you also eat with us, no problem, but also less fast from dawn to sunset. Tell him. Don't say, don't don't get upset with him because he's saying that we eat lots of food. I know because there's a, a guy, uh, Mr., you know, uh, a person who has got chemical, you know, problem with his brain chemical, uh, you know, malfunction of his brain. He has got this problem. He has brought this, you know, a video recently he has put on the YouTube. I don't want to mention his name because I don't want you people to listen to him because when you listen to him, you will agree with him because you don't have the correct knowledge of the religion. Then you will say, okay, this person is saying uh, things which are true. So this guy, he has brought about this. You know, what kind of a fasting is this? They don't eat from dawn to uh, you know sunset, and then when it is adhan given to them, and then they jump on the food as if they are hungry beast. Yeah. Why? Because they he must have seen people doing that, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know how to relieve himself properly in the toilet, so he would not know how what teaching of Islam is. What did Rasulullah say? That when you break your fast, you jump like a beast? No. We don't follow this man or that man. We don't follow the culture. We follow Rasul And what did Rasul say? That break your fast with water and dates. And then go for your prayer. And then whatever Allah has blessed you, Quran says, Kulu wa shrabu, <coughs> wa kulu wa shrabu, hatta yatabayyana lakum al khaytu al abyadu min al khaytu al aswadi min al fajr. Thumma atimu al suyama ila al layl. Well, then this, this is very clear. Uh, Quranic guidance are there with people those are fasting, eat and drink from you know uh, uh, sunset till the dawn. You can eat and drink. So it could be too much, could be less, anything. That's fine. But we don't know the dalil, so we can't give the answer to them. So when they laugh at us, why? Because this they must be seeing people jumping on the food. Pakode, samosa, kebab, and biryani, and this and that. And they see, oh, come on, look. This, this is called a spiritual ibadah. So definitely this kuffar will. And this is not that. In the body that shaitan is there inside, in their, within themselves, their kareen, which is inside the body, the shaitan who wiswas, does the U.S. wis of his sudur in nas, that shaitan will make them look, look, this is Muslim, these are Muslims. They think they're claiming that they're fasting. And recently they are talking about, Jesus is talking about, you know, in the Bible, Jesus is talking in the Mark and uh, that, you know, people who are showing off and fasting, Allah, the God will not, Father will not reward them. So he refers to the Muslims. Look, Muslims are showing off that we are fasting. They, you know, sh shows off at the time of dawn. They shows off at the time of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sunset, they break their fast and they eat like beast and all that. So they are showing off. They are showing off that we are fasting. No. 
because this guy, he, as I told you, I told you, sorry to say this, I, again and again I have to say this guy, he doesn't know who is, is his family lineage, what is his family lineage. Sorry to say that. I know, I can guarantee that this guy doesn't know even his proper family lineage. So how can he talk about Muslims? So when he's talking about Muslims, and when he talks about any specific act of worship, then we should have knowledge to talk about that. See, iftari, I told you, we should not eat like beast. I don't agree. I agree with the non-Muslim if he says that we people are just, you know, jumping on the food and eating too much. We should be following the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad and what Quran says. Quran says you can eat and drink till the dawn. Yes, but not this way as a beast. But at the time of iftari, our Prophet has told us, break your fast with water and dates. Who is doing that? We are just looking and subhanAllah, we are so... We should correct ourselves before we, you know, say that the people are, the non-Muslims are there, they will always object you. They, shaitan will never let them follow, you know, good example. And we are not showing any good example to them. If we would have shown the good example to them, then they would have become Muslims at the, as the Sahaba were been, you know, washed by the non-Muslims during the time of Rasulullah And they saw that. They literally triggered the Muslims to go against what is mentioned in their books. So that they can, you know, prove them that you are not the one who are mentioned in our book. They triggered the Sahaba. They triggered Rasul And they found that these people are same, exactly same, what they found in their own books. And then they said, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha Allah, wa Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. They were not like this Kuffar. Because this Kuffar, they are not seeing Quran. They are not seeing Islam. They are not seeing the teaching of Rasul Sallallahu They are looking at Abdul Majid. Muhammad, Iqbal, Yasin, Muhammad, John, Peter, like that. They are looking them, they are comparing them. Like this is, this is a Muslim. Look, this is a Muslim. This is a Muslim woman. This is a Muslim man. Look what they are doing. So they don't know what Quran says. And they, they will never go. They will never go to the Quran. They will never go to the Hadith. They will look at you and you, they will think that you people are, you know, Muslims. Okay, so Alhamdulillah. Uh, it's too much, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think I have answered so many questions. Uh, I eat too much. Uh, sometime you can eat too much doesn't matter but don't eat at the time when the kafir is looking at you and don't look at the time when you are following the sunnah of rasul otherwise you are changing the sunnah and you are misguiding the other people and they will think if this is islam i don't want that okay big big problem uh, imam sab okay big big problem okay no problem sometimes we eat like little bit uh, like haywan yes we the Muslims they do that. That's the use the reason I use the word beast. Uh, are the non-Muslim Karin locked up in Ramadan too? It's not needed for them. It is locked up. All the shayatin are locked up. But non-Muslims they already you know uh, well trained by the Karin and the shaitan. So there is not a point. It is the it is encouragement for we Muslims that Alhamdulillah look Allah is so merciful that even the sources by which you can be tempted and can do wrong things Allah has changed them. So now you have no excuse. You have the good opportunity to do the best. Okay, my brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah Khairan. Uh, inshallah, tomorrow again, 7 o'clock, please get ready. I will be there on the show. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shahur Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan linnasi wa bayinatin. من الهدى والفرقان